Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The topic of our discussion today is type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Type 1 hypersensitivity reaction is also known as immediate hypersensitivity reaction, which is caused by the IgE antibodies mediated activation of mast cells as a result of exposure to the antigen. So the activation of mast cells results in the release of cytokines and various mediators, which result in acute inflammatory reaction known as type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. The reaction typically occurs within minutes after the antigen exposure and it is also known as allergic reaction. So the outline of the pathogenesis includes exposure to the antigen. Antigen exposure could be through the skin such as fomites which include clothing, towel and bed sheets etc. Certain topical creams such as drugs or cosmetics. The person can also get exposed to the antigen through inhalation such as dust and pollens in asthma. Moreover, oral intake of certain foods such as peanuts and certain drugs such as NSAIDs and various antibiotics can also act as the antigen in the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. IV administration of certain drugs such as NSAIDs and dyes for radiological investigations. So once the person is exposed to the antigen, the body gets sensitized, which means the body is prepared for the next exposure, which ultimately leads in the allergic reaction. So whatever the source of the antigen, once it is exposed to the body through any route, it is presented to the macrophages and dendritic cells in the body, which are also known as APCs or antigen presenting cells. So these cells release interleukin-4. This interleukin-4 upregulates the transformation of naive CD4 helper T cells into CD4-TH2 cells. So these CD4-TH2 cells play a key role in sensitization of the individual to the antigen. So CD4-TH2 cells release interleukin-4 which affects the B lymphocytes and shifts them from producing IgM antibodies to IgE antibodies. These IgE antibodies once produced by the B lymphocytes, they get attached to the mast cells on FC receptors. CD4-TH2 cells also produce interleukin-5 which is the most potent activator of eosinophils. It also upregulates the production of eosinophils. Interleukin-13 increases the production of mucus by the epithelial cells. So the mast cells having FC receptors and the IgE antibodies attached to them at this point are fully sensitized. Now the immune system is completely ready for the next exposure of antigen to the body. So once there is re-exposure of the allergen also known as the antigen, the antigens cross-link with the IgE antibodies on the mast cells. So let's say these are the mast cells. And these are the FC receptors. These are the IgE antibodies. So this antigen cross links with the IgE antibodies on the mast cells, which activates the signal transduction from FC receptors to the mast cell cytoplasm, resulting in degranulation of the mast cells. So this degranulation results in the release of certain mediators, which include vasoactive amines, lipid mediators, and cytokines. So these Vasoactive amines and lipid mediators and cytokines result in an allergic reaction which is known as type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. So the mediators released by the mast cells include histamines which result in vasodilation and increased permeability of the blood vessels. They also result in constriction of the bronchiolar muscles causing bronchospasm. The enzymes produced by the mast cells include chymase and Tryptase. These enzymes cause damage to the epithelial cells. Moreover, there is production of the leukotrienes, which include C4 and D4 leukotrienes. These C4 and D4 leukotrienes are much more potent than histamines and they result in vasodilation, increased permeability of blood vessels, and bronchospasm, the same function as the histamines. Moreover, there are also B4 leukotrienes, which act as chemotactic factors for neutrophils eosinophils and monocytes. Prostaglandin D2 is the most abundant mediator produced by the mast cells. And this also results in vasodilation, increased permeability of blood vessels, bronchospasm and increased mucus secretion from the epithelial cells. Platelet activating factor is also released from the mast cells which in addition to the effects of histamines also increase platelet aggregation. Cytokines are also produced by the mast cells which include interleukin-1, tissue necrotic factor and certain chemokines.
So all these mediators result in the production of a reaction known as type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Type 1 hypersensitivity reaction has two phases. One is the early phase and the second is the late phase. The early phase is caused by all these mediators. The early phase typically starts to appear in 5 to 30 minutes of the exposure and lasts for up to 60 minutes. So once the early phase is over, the cytokines which include interleukin 1, tissue necrotic factor and chemokines recruit the leukocytes out of which the most important is eosinophils. So these eosinophils produce leukotrienes which add on to all the mediators released by the mast cells. Moreover, eosinophils also activate the mast cells and ultimately the mast cells secrete all of these mediators all over again resulting in late phase or delayed phase of the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. The late phase typically arises after 2 to 24 hours of the exposure. So the thing you have to remember here is that the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction has two phases. One is the early phase which is driven by the mediators from mast cells which include histamines, enzymes, leukotrienes, prostaglandin D2 and platelet activating factor. Once the early phase is over, the cytokines recruit leukocytes such as eosinophils. These eosinophils result in a delayed reaction or late phase reaction which produces the effects of vasodilation, increased vascular permeability, bronchospasm and allergic reactions all over again. So the allergic reaction or type 1 hypersensitivity reaction could be either localized which means it is contained to a specific area most commonly at the site of exposure such as to the respiratory tract in case of bronchial asthma and to the skin in case of urticaria. So the early phase of type 1 hypersensitivity reaction typically starts to appear in 5 to 30 minutes of the antigen exposure causing edema which is due to increased vascular permeability and erythema of the skin which is redness of the skin. If the site of exposure is respiratory tract there is difficulty in breathing due to edema of respiratory tract and excessive glandular secretions producing mucus. So the early phase lasts for 2 to 60 minutes and then there is onset of the delayed phase which appears after 2 to 24 hours and results in same signs and symptoms as the early phase. Type 1 hypersensitivity reaction can also be systemic which means it is involving the complete body. It is also known as anaphylaxis and results in anaphylactic shock which is characterized by decreased blood pressure. There is widespread edema which is due to generalized increased leakiness of the blood vessels. Moreover, there is difficulty in breathing due to edema of the respiratory tract and skin erythema is also present with the hives. Moreover, vomiting and diarrhea can also be present and the symptoms typically appear within the minutes of exposure. Anaphylactic reaction constitutes an emergency. Management of anaphylactic reaction is with epinephrine 1 mg subcutaneous. And moreover, IV antihistamine and IV steroids such as hydrocortisone are also given. Permanent treatment can also be done with the desensitization therapy in which an increased dose of the antigen is given to the patient on subsequent visits. The idea of desensitization therapy is to make the immune system used to of the antigen which is done by occupying all the IgE antibodies on the mast cells by the antigen. So the subsequent exposure of antigen to the body does not cause type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. So this concludes our section of type 1 hypersensitivity reaction or immediate hypersensitivity reaction. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section. Thank you.